What's good, sports fans? Thanks for pressing play on another Pay Me No Mind sports and entertainment video. I'm busy today. A uh, lot of stuff going on this week, especially in the boxing world. Uh, obviously, big news today or last night with the injury to the number one draft pick in the next NBA draft in uh, Zion Williamson. Injuring himself last night in the, the, the first meeting of uh, Duke and UNC at uh, Duke last night. And this this is what the channel was just going to become, man. Um, I don't know if you know, but today marks is the anniversary of the assassination of El Haj Malik El Shabazz also known as Malcolm X, born Malcolm Little. And uh, it's a reminder that I got to myself every year just, you know, of, of how real stuff was back in the day and, the, and real sacrifice and standing tall for stuff and doing stuff. And one of his quotes that I'm seeing, uh, two of them actually, they're both, one is repeated, but the future belongs to those who prepare for it today, and education is the passport to the future, for tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today. And so I'm looking at the game, and of course I, I, I expected the talks of, you know, guys getting paid you know, uh, to, pay, to play college ball. And this is, of course, we're talking about a guy who could be a generational talent in Zion. And so Donovan Mitchell, at Spider Mitchell on Twitter, the Utah Jazz uh, point guard, tweeted, again, let's remember all the money that went into this game and these players get none of it. And now Zion gets hurt. Something has to change. At NCAA. Great. We gonna continue to have this same conversation every year. You you ask you're asking the NCAA to do something. That's gonna happen. And he alludes to the fact that remember all the money that went into this game yesterday it was reported by numerous sites that the average ticket was twenty five hundred dollars which was like the fourth highest ticket uh, and was like, you know, the Super Bowl, this this recent Super Bowl was number one with the average of uh, 4,000. Um, actually, I thought I saw one time this year's tickets were some of the lowest. But anyway, neither here nor there. But it's just like a fundamental, to me, for us to keep sitting in public and saying this stuff, is is it, it kind of is a poor reflection of black people in our community. Uh, like I said in the quote, the future belongs to those who prepare for it today. So if we're going to change things, like what's the actionable thing that can be done right now? And I know you can go play in the G League now. We had a kid from Cincinnati that opted to do this this last year. I need to look him up to see what's even going on with that. But this, what, what can we do to replicate the interest in that game, which was built by these two universities in Duke and UNC, with the first meeting happening in, in 1920? Like, what can we start today? And stick to and, and you know and that's that's sustainable and that gets supported until it has the magnitude that this game had in it for it to be that big for you to complain about it being that big and the kids none of those guys on the court getting compensated for being out there. When when do we move past just talking about it? Like, so I looked up something in two thousand and seven. The CrossFit games started. I didn't hear people, I didn't hear bodybuilders and, and uh, fitness heads. 
I didn't see. I don't recall them sitting around on MySpace talking about, you know, we're pushed out of the major sports. We need to get, we need to get paid. You know, blah blah blah. They just went to work. They created their own thing. In 2007, the first prize place. I mean, the first place prize money was $500. For 2019, the winner will receive 300k. That's 300 bands. That took them 17, 18 years to, to get that. But that took people paying the money to be in it, competing, building the gyms to create the athletes to support it, continuing to pay the entrance fees, going out and getting, uh, getting sponsorship, getting the location together, with that sponsorship, getting the uh, you know the equipment, the gear, the different stuff that they use for the events, they got a broadcast partner. That took years. So if the goal is you know instead of coming on here with all the talk, I just want to know. I got a couple of bands socked away somewhere, like people like AI, Mello. He should, Melo Shiz is a prime example. He should be leading the way. You know, what are you doing now that you're on the outside looking in, maybe wrongfully? Why are you keep knocking on that door instead of maybe going in and holding some, some, some meetings and seeing what, what can be done, what can be started? Who can put this together? Because there should be some, there should be some other options. And now you see that the NBA is, you know, has officially proposed to lower the age to 18. I don't know how that got has to be sorted out or worked out with the current CBA and whatnot. But I just don't know how just tweeting and making uh, videos and, and, and uh, you know, Facebook posts about what's fair or unfair. I don't know how that does anything. The NBA, 72 years in the game, 72 years in operation. So, like I said, what is going to, when is there going to be somebody that actually does something that has the, the resources to, to make a difference, to make a change, to do something? And then again, Duke has uh, Coach K Court. UNC has the Dean Dome. Like, where is the infrastructure going to be for what needs to be done? Where is the arenas going to be? Are we going to go to the games? That's the thing. Excuse me. You have somebody like LeVar Ball out in the front of something, of an alternative, but I don't know. Did you really trust LeVar? It seemed like he, his main interest was to get his boys to the to the NBA. Not that he wanted to leave something behind for other athletes looking for alternatives. And was he even universally liked, you know? But I'm just saying, you know, some of the greats of the game, Dr. J, uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, a guy who can't couldn't break into coaching in the NBA. Uh, Isaiah Thomas was formerly part ownership of the CBA or whatever, often blamed for running that into the ground. Uh, and, you know, his, his business failings have been well discussed. But, um, you know, when are, when are some of these different guys whose name and, and likeness and image and all of that hold some cachet? Like, when do you go in and, and really start something? But that's the thing, like the NFL, the NBA, I mean, they have legacy. I mean, there, there's no getting around that. Zion and, and Barrett and Reddish, these guys aren't coming out and saying, you know what? We're going to pass up on that four years at four million a year to be in your lottery, to go over here and play in Will Smith's league. Or, or Will Smith, Oprah, 
Bob Johnson and, <coughs> you know, somebody else or whatever. I don't know. But I'm just saying, like I said, year after year, day after day, all these tweets, all this, this finger activity, <coughs> excuse me, posts on Instagram, this not fair, that's not fair, uh, the X Games. First X Game was in 1995. I did not hear all of these white kids, some of them athletic, a lot of them non-athletic, but I didn't cry. I didn't hear them crying for decades on who's not letting them do what, who's not treating them fairly. They organized again. They went through all of the. Uh, they went through all the steps. They trusted the process. I just want to know when somebody is going to get off of, like I said, and I want to, I'm going to talk about Colin, Colin Kaepernick tomorrow, but the whole NFL blackout movement. I saw the video with several brothers with the black jerseys on in the video, and they all, you know, said peace to foot to the NFL, and I'm done with the NFL. Okay. My barber included, you know, for two months worth of haircuts. Yo, Wood, what do you think about this? What's your position? I don't have no, I don't have a position. You should do what you want to do. I'm going to do what I want to do. Uh, again, I, what's the end, what's the end game? But you make the video, did the, did the dudes in the video afterwards, did they go get together and say, hey, what do we do now? Do we pull some money together? Do we see if our 20 can 20 guys can turn into 100 guys, can turn into 500 guys, to turn into 2,000 guys? No. It's just get some clicks, get some views, and yell, and shout, and tweet. So, like I said, at, at some point in time, man, you got to do something. And we're in a day and age where, you know, Tesla reportedly, or, you know, the legend is that they started manufacturing cars in garages. And now it's people out here, you know, buying Teslas. And it's, you know, it's still not one of the major uh, brands and everything because they got to get the scale, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm just saying, like Malcolm X said, the future belongs to those who prepare for it today. So, I get you, uh, Spider Mitchell, and there should be, you know, there should be some kind of uh, compensation for these guys. Uh, you know, it's not any better to sit out of high school and go over to Europe and take your talent over there and play in somebody else's game. That That's not a great alternative. I just wish we had something substantive uh, and there's, there's something substantive could uh, result from all of this consternation. But, uh, hey, that's it, man. I'm just running my mouth. Pay me no mind. Sports and entertainment. That's it, man. I ain't got no more. I just want to know, email me the meeting, comment with the meeting so we can, can pull some of this together. And uh, get, you know, the CrossFit Basketball League going to get this, to get this, the money going, to set it up. Because you got to start now for 2027 or 2032. And let's be, let, last question, who's actually supporting Cube? I mean, he, you're trying to do something different and has set out to do it. He has people involved, the right people involved. Good business partners is on TV. I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't watch it because what is I don't you know what are what are they playing for? And that's another thing that's you know with challenging the NFL and the uh, NBA. Like, how does second class athletes really stand up against the real thing? So I just don't understand how you overcome the legacy of these these these, these institutions. Uh, it's definitely not going to be by talk. But look, let me get on out of here, man. Everybody enjoy your day.
I'm out. Peace.